No matter who you are, no matter where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. On Tuesday, we will be engaging with African American History Month through an experience with Motown music. Kurt will be leading a discussion on Motown at 6.30 in the Annex. Um, during that time, he's gonna be sharing bits and pieces of Motown music itself and having us engage with the topic. Um, as most of you are aware, Motown music is very Michigan. It comes out of Detroit, it comes out of um, the African American community, and was very much on the American scene for a, a quite a period of time. So join us on Tuesday with Kurt and experience Motown music. As we step into Ash Wednesday, which also is this week, we will be having two Ash Wednesday worship experiences in the spirit of COVID-19, or we have a COVID-19 twist to them. At 11 o'clock, um, we'll be gathering out in the commons, and if you have palms at home that um, are dried out, whether from last year or from other times, you are invited to bring them. We also have a collection here. What we'll be doing is gathering around a fire pit um, and spiritually together burning the palms and then making ashes and sharing the ashes with one another. Um, when we share the ashes, um, we'll be in welcoming you to put it on your forehead traditionally the back of your hand, or in true United Church of Christ fashion, you also have the option of not at all. Um, mostly what we're trying to do is offer an opportunity. And then at 11.45, we have our second experience. This one involves a drive-through, a drive-through experience as you come around the building and stop and get a a bowl of to-go vegetable soup, and you'll be offered at that time the mark of ashes on your forehead, on the back of your hand, or not at all. Um, we want you to know that you and the whole of the community is invited to join us. Looking way down the road, we are planning on having a virtual auction to raise resources for programming in the commons. The date for this is the middle of April, but between now and then we need to gather items. And as you think about that virtual auction, it's very similar to the virtual auction that we did for the Festival of Trees. Um, and we're hoping in this particular case, instead of people donating trees and Christmas items, that what individuals are doing is donating other kinds of things that are very close to them and unique. Um, one person, for instance, is donating a pan of baklava um, made to order. 
we already have um, a prayer shawl donated. Um, our council president is and her husband are donating a round of miniature golf with them and a gourmet picnic. That should be a fun experience. Um, your pastor has been thinking about something like um, you get the chance to select the message for the day, the theme for the day, um, as well as picking the hymns. Um, who knows, maybe someone's interested in that. All kinds of different ideas. Maybe someone has a cabin in the mountains or on a lake that they'll donate for a weekend or a week. Um, maybe you have something you paint, or maybe there is a quilt or an afghan. Um, the imagination takes you where you may go. There are other announcements printed in the Tuesday and Saturday emails. We invite you to engage with those. As I close out announcements, I want to in introduce you to the next face you're going to be seeing in this worship service. Reverend Neil Brady is the pastor of Peace Lutheran Church here in town. You know, it's a church that you know and I know is very close to the heart of this congregation. So on this Valentine's Day, it seems right and appropriate to introduce a new colleague in town who you will be seeing and working with over time, a colleague from a church that, again, is close to our hearts. I turn you over to Reverend Neil Brady. We light our candles this Valentine's Day and entering into the presence of God who we define as light and love. That light and love fills our hearts, minds, and souls. We in turn spread it to others. We worship in the name of God who is creator, Christ, and spirit. Jesus said, you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, mind, soul, and strength. In our time of worship, we find ourselves intentionally in God's presence, loving God with all that we have, knowing that even before we love God, God loved and continues to love us. Jesus went on to say, And just as you love God, you ought also to love your neighbor and yourself. In our worship, we share such love with all around us. Let us pray. Loving God, fill our worship with that spirit which begins in our hearts, warms the entirety of our beings, and spreads into the world in which we live. Amen.
A reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Paul writes, If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I'm a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. But when I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part. Then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide, these three, and the greatest of these is love. I see trees of green, red roses too.
It's another beautiful day in Michigan. We are going to be having a Valentine's worship service today. Today is supposed to be Valentine's Day, and I wanted to engage with that theme of love. Usually when we talk about love in the church, we talk about it from the context of um, loving one another, loving God, for the definition of God is love. And so when we talk about love, it just flows through everything. But I wanted to get onto a side of love that we don't often talk about, and that's passion. About six weeks ago, I approached Don Sovi via email, and I said to him, would your group sing a song for us? that is about love, about what you see as romantic love. You don't need to be religious. You can step into the secular realm, um, but choose a song that for you is all about the nature of love and romance. Well, he just heard the song he chose, What a Wonderful World, and friends did a beautiful, beautiful job with that song. It sounds beautiful, it is beautiful, and it is the definition of love. For it is what we think of when we think about the nature of what love's about. When um, I put out an email to the church and I said, um, give me stories, stories of when your relationship was young and new and you were with your beloved person in life Oftentimes, when that relationship is young and new, there's a song that a couple starts to associate with their relationship. That when it comes over the radio, they will stop and look at the other and say, that's our song. Because what they're associating it with is when they begin to first meet and begin to feel passionate towards and about one another. What I received was a whole bunch of references, I shouldn't say a bunch, a few references, that invariably wore towards those songs that were sung at the wedding. Or, um, or just very peaceful. We began our worship with one, one of those songs, Pachelbel's Canon. Again, a beautiful, beautiful piece. It's what we associate with love. It's what we associate with a big picture of love where there is life and beauty and it just flows through all. What it made me aware of is that some of those other songs and those other pieces that we think of as being um, part of that early relationship, whether it's in the secular world or other, um, is something that we're uncomfortable with. And I would say this is true not just of our church. This is true of Christianity as a whole. It's true of religious people as a whole, whether you identify as Christian, Jew, Muslim. Um, we're uncomfortable with the forms of love that we would think of as passion or sexuality. So much so that um, many sects and many groups will create incredible rules around separating women from men and often even isolating women. And um, I don't want to suggest any one religion um, does this because when you go into each of our religious groups, you will find that these exist. It comes back to saying we're uncomfortable about sexuality and passion. Because what can happen with sexuality and passion is that it can blaze up and blaze um, so much so that sparks begin to fly and, and there's this roaring fire that seems to consume. 
what you're not aware of is that this is probably take 297 on a fire. Three days ago, I thought I had this service finished. I had a blazing fire, a wonderful fire, um, that just flamed up and out, and I turned over um, the film segment to Erica um, to be incorporated into the service, and lo and behold, she discovered no sound. So today, um, I've re-recorded. Um, the fire hasn't wanted to go. Um, this is about the, the fourth fire I've built. Um, I gave up trying to light the fire as part of the service and decided to just um, have it burning to start with. I had a, a second complete message. I went to double check the sound and guess what? No sound. So right now, I'm praying that the fire at some point is going to consume and blaze so that you get the sense of fire burning up and almost out of control and that I get a take. But let's come back to what this is really is about. It's about passion. You see, we're okay with talking about love when it when we're talking about love between friends. We're okay about talking about love when we talk about love of neighbor. We're okay even of talking about love when it becomes love of the enemy. And we're certainly okay about talking about love when it's about family. And oh gosh, are we okay when we talk about the love of our children? Um, that's passion. And we'll often be very passionate about it. But when we start to talk about the love of sexuality, it's like, oh, should we even talk about this topic? And yet, it's part of life. And the word that is often um, associated with sexuality when we fully embrace with it is passion. Now, when I talk about passion, you know that we all have passion for our children, as we should. We have passion for, ideally, for um, our professions. We have passion for those things that we think of as our hobbies. And when we have passion for something, what it means is that we invest time and we invest energy and sometimes it almost consumes us. Passion and sexuality intersect. And therein becomes discomfort. Because when passion with sexuality flames up, you literally get these flames that are leaping upwards and outwards and sparks are going everywhere and, and the fire is consuming. And we worry, we worry that it's going to be out of control. And guess what? Sometimes it is. Sometimes poor decisions get made. Sometimes those poor decisions end up having consequences that last for a lifetime. And yet, it's also part of life. Because we also know that when a fire blazes up and burns, it also can be controlled. And that oftentimes as it comes together, more good comes than anything else, and that the blazing of that relationship often births into something new. Um, ideally, what happens when that relationship begins to burn up, we begin to see a deep and profound relationship developing between two individuals. That is, if they're meant to be together that passion turns into friendship, companionship, a love that just goes deep, 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 deep. I made the mistake once of saying to an, a couple that was a little more um, senior than myself, that had been together probably for four decades of their life, maybe five decades, I don't know. And I talked about how Passion is usually associated with young love and it burns out. At which point they both looked at me and said, young man, and I'm not so young, by the way. 
Trust me, it doesn't. The reminder is, is that passion isn't just for the young. And it's not just for new relationships. But it can crop up and flame up just as those flames a few minutes ago began to suddenly leap up a little bit more (laughs) throughout a relationship. Thus, bringing a depth and a joy into that relationship. But most of the time, for most of us, I would dare to say that passion may be something we remember in the past or at the beginning of a relationship um, or in former relationships. But I can tell you as one person that um, I would not give away those days of passion. I may give away some of the stupid things I did, but I wouldn't give away the passion. Because that consuming feeling that just burns up and flames up um, just brought a wonder and joy and into each day and an anticipation into each day. You see, our Bible is at times uncomfortable with sexuality, and yet there's a whole book in our Old Testament called the Song of Songs or the Song of Solomon um, that's really about passion. There are those who wonder why we've kept it, and you, so you'll get fancy theories like this is meant as um, an, an allegory. It's a relationship between God and human beings. And I wonder, though, if the real reason it exists is to remind us that as we get uncomfortable with sexuality, that um, we're to be reminded that passion is good and beautiful and to be embraced. For when God created, or as we like to think God created in those creation stories, and we have those metaphors coming out, part of, one of the metaphors is um, go forth and multiply, reproduce. And what is part of reproduction? It's, it's about passion. It's about sexuality. And without that, um, it's not going to happen. And it's meant to be enjoyed. It's meant to be a part of life. It's meant to be embraced. Now, we do need to remember to um, define the differences, the passion that and how I might express my passion towards a person who might be my beloved in life is totally different from the passion I will show or the love I will show to the neighbor, to the enemy, to my children, to my friends, to my family. And each kind of love has a different way of talking and a different kind of what is appropriate for it. So the, so how one expresses passion towards a beloved should be and rightly gets reserved for the beloved. So again, coming back to Song of Songs, Song of Solomon. Um, It's a book that's full of erotic poetry. If you're not mature and you read it, um, you walk away with some strange elements within it. But if you're mature, you can see um, that there is the celebration of the body. There is the celebration of the partner. There is the call of life. The passage I want to share is is probably one of the tamer segments that comes out. Um, It's a segment or a set of verses that once in a long while you'll hear at a wedding. Not very often. Listen to these words. The voice of my beloved. Ah, you see, you just enjoy. You enjoy your beloved. Even the sound, the sight, all kinds of things about the beloved one enjoys. The voice of my beloved. Look, he comes bounding over the mountains, leaping over the hills. You catch that sense of excitement. The beloved that's coming is coming with enthusiasm and energy and life. And isn't it wonderful to be embraced that way? 
the voice of my beloved. Look, he comes bounding over the mountains, leaping over the hills. My beloved is like a gazelle, like a young stag. Look, there he stands behind our wall, gazing in at the windows, looking through the lattice. My beloved speaks. My beloved speaks and says to me, Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. For now the winter is past, and the rains are over and gone. The flowers appear upon the earth, and the time of singing has come. The voice of the turtle dove can be heard in our land. The fig tree puts forth its figs, and the vines are in blossom, and they give forth their fragrance. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. And yeah, there are those words in there that sound a little creepy, you know, look, gazing in at the windows. But isn't this what lovers throughout time have always done? The rock that gets thrown at the window to catch the attention. You know, when you're not quite supposed to be together and you want to be together, how do you get the attention of the other? You come sneaking, you come leaping, but the, you get also these other words all around these verses. The sense of enjoying the sound of your lover. Seeing what your lover is is in the most beautiful of ways. The comparison to the gazelle and the and the grace of the gazelle, the joy of being together, the celebration of life together, and then that invitation, that invitation to come and let's step into the world of dreams. For spring has come, there's life, and that life is flowing in passion. You know, in my background, you can see a few trees. In just a little while, in a couple of months, those trees are going to become passionate. They are going to begin to burn. I mean, to um, have the sap flow up through their trunks. And when the sap begins to flow, they're going to push out those leaves and they're going to push out those blossoms. And the passion of life will just swell up and swell out for this is part of the beauty of life. Um, the winter just goes away. The passion comes and, and flows. So as I look at these words and think about a time like Valentine's Day, I'm thinking about the beauty of passion and the beauty of the love that often exists between two individuals and how it burns and but also you know at its base at its base that sense of looking at one's beloved and not seeing their faults but seeing who they are their beautiful parts, their graceful parts, that you enjoy the sound. You know, part of what happens when we're passionate about another person is that all of our thoughts are headed towards that individual. We want to spend as much time together as possible. We look for excuses to be together. And this is beautiful. And yes, again, as I said, sometimes, you know, when I've been in love, so to speak, I've wished that I wasn't quite so OCD. And we have to sometimes snap ourselves out of that because there's other life to live. And I also have to remember that when one is in love, that sometimes one doesn't make the wisest decisions. On the other hand, would we really trade it away? Isn't this something we want in life? So whether it is about remembering those moments in the past or finding new ones in the present or maybe anticipating those in time to come, I hope you have passion and have had passion and can celebrate it, but also remember you know, whether you are celebrating that passion and, and worrying about where the sparks may be flying, 
Think about also that special someone that could be a part of life or has been a part of your life and how time is spent together and how each sees the other. And you know, dreams never end. They only end with our last breath. And so we can always be inviting the people around us to step into our dream together. For the winter, indeed, will soon be past. The sap will begin to flow. And will, with it will come the sweetness of maple syrup. It will become with it new buds, new growth. With it will come the chirping of birds and watching them chasing each other as they build nests and find mates in life. And with it will come young love, new love. And I do enjoy watching two people who are in love with each other and you know it's new love and they're passionate about because that is so beautiful to see. And for those of you who are in deep and committed relationships, may you experience passion, renewed passion, and may you always see your beloved through beautiful eyes. For your beloved is full of energy, has a beautiful voice, and invites you into dreams. Amen. Prayer concerns and celebrations are listed in the Saturday email that we send out. We do lift up these individuals in prayer. Today is officially Valentine's Day. And so I invite you to be thinking about lifting up in prayer those individuals who are your beloved, whether they be that special person in your life or your children. I invite you to lift up your friends and neighbors, family members, and to offer an extra prayer for each individual um, who is ever close to our hearts. Today, because we had as our guest, um, Reverend Neil Brady, pastor of Peace Lutheran Church, a church that is one that we work with closely in this community, um, I ask you to pray for that church as well. Let us pray. O oh God of love, you are indeed the definition of love. Enfold us as we also reach out to loving you. 
on this Valentine's Day, this Love Sunday. Help us to think about our beloveds, that special person in our life, our children, that you might be with each person and that they might know that they are loved and cared for by you, knowing safety. We think of those who are our brothers and sisters in life, whether biological or spiritual, that those we think of as brother and sister might have the strength they need to live life fully, capably, and with enjoyment. We think of those who are our friends, the people we carry confidences to, the people with whom we enjoy spending an extra time, the people who give us advice. We ask that you would be with them, that they might have fulfillment in life, enjoyment, and that they might receive the support they need in return. We think of our neighbors, the people we meet every day, whether it's at work, out in our neighborhood, or in the broader world. May each person feel valued and respected. And then we think of our, the stranger, that person whom we find it difficult to love. We ask that even these individuals would know safety and security and have abundance in life. Finally, we pray for ourselves. For you know what we know, the places that are broken within ourselves, the times we feel unloved, that you might fill us and renew us. We ask that you would be with our church, that it might always be a loving and supporting community. And we ask that you be with Peace Lutheran Church and their new pastor, Reverend Neil Brady. For may the Spirit be alive in their midst. And hear us as we pray as you've taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. When we think about offering, we in the church are ever so appreciative of those who have been faithful, who have found ways to continue to support your church. Thank you for stopping by. Whether you're bearing gifts for yourselves or for others, thank you for the gifts you've mailed through the postal system. Thank you for the gifts that have come through your banks. Um, it supports us and it makes a difference. But we also thank you for the gifts you give to the broader community, whether it be through um, the support you give to educational insti institutions, museums, um, shelters for animals, shelters for humans, or in any number of a thousand ways that we support the broader community helping to make for a better community for all of us. As you prepare to go forth into the world, may you go forth with your hearts ablaze with God's love, filled with passion, and may that love and passion be shared with those around you, especially with your beloveds, but also with everyone with whom you meet. And remember what we believe as a church. Our church will provide a place and direction for joining with God, healing the broken, and educating youth and adults. 
We are challenged by our faith to reach out to our congregants, our community, and our world family, and to offer opportunities for spiritual growth and re renewal. We welcome all into our Christian family. This is our mission as a church of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now for our benediction. May God bless you and keep you. May God lift his face upon you and be gracious unto you. May God give you his countenance and grant you his favor and peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. See, it's working. <laughs> okay. okay. Thank you.